All right, what's up, YouTube? Eugene here, and joined by my fellow fragrance enthusiast, Daniel, again. <laughs> We're getting excited, carried away, talking about perfume. We're bringing you five fragrances we're looking forward to wearing for October or the fall. Daniel's actually gotten carried away and he's got seven, eight, nine. Right. I yeah, see yeah. lots of it's bottles. It's so hard to choose. It's so hard to right. choose. But to be fair, uh, one of ours is, um, yeah. it's common. We've both selected yeah. the same And just same independently, because so. he was like, oh, you brought that too. I brought that one too. Cool. And we both have a lot of bottles. Like I, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Needs All right. So come October, come fall, the weather's getting crisp. It's getting cool. The, the leaves are changing colors. What kind of things do you look forward to wearing? Like, what is your comfort zone come the fall season? What do you like? What kind of colors, textures, feelings? Yeah. Oh. So I guess, like, um, obviously, like, there are different accords and notes, and I generally will group them as summer and winter types of accords. And then, of course, within that, there are fragrances that, that bounce a bit between them. But generally, for me, my, like, winter shelf is pretty much, like, oud, leather, incense, um you know tobacco amber um and then i'll do a bit of like say patchouli florientals and orientals and then i guess like gourmands is a subcategory and then there's a bit of wood that might go there if it's like sandalwood or any sort of warmer wood but pretty much like then my bottom shelf is is like the woods and the herbs and the vetivers and the citruses and the neroli's and aquatics and white florals and barbershop stuff so pretty much like my home base really is the top shelf of the winter stuff um that's what i really love so i always look forward to ambers which is really my first love and incense and a bit of leather and a bit of oud and um yeah that that's kind of where i'm exploring um and you said you know pick five i really i looked through the whole collection which was like my top shelf was like let's say like 50 bottles and I really just tried to think to myself, like, okay, what are the things that I'm really excited to wear? What are the fragrances that just, that are just like a great experience? Whenever I put them on, I just feel great. These are the ones that I come and I just, I just smell them all the time because I just, I just love smelling them. And I'll be, I'll be talking about other things and I'll go, all right, I want to smell that again. And I'll just sort of sniff the cap because it's, it's something that's magnetic and it's exciting and it, it sort of draws me to it. So yeah, this, this is my sort of collection of those bottles. Um, I will say that some of them are, are, a lot of them are actually sort of expensive ones, but I really, I didn't, I, I don't care about the brand. I don't care about the packaging. I mean, I, I like that stuff, but I didn't, I didn't pick stuff because it was discontinued, because it was rare. I'm not like, you know, flexing, uh, you know, showing off. Like, honestly, I just really picked the stuff that I enjoy. And um, I don't think any of them are kind of cheapies, but, but like, yeah. Um, so you, you pick things that you will actually wear. Yeah. And that's right. the thing too. Not there to were, show there muscle. Were, there, okay. Right, there were totally a few in there, which and, I was like, oh, I could pick this. Oh, I'm excited to look and wear this. But then I thought, you know, what? I've actually never really worn that that much, so I can't really say that. these are really the fragrances that I wear in the winter and I and I actually go through my rotation. And that's more fair. Often. There's nothing I would expect less is what you're actually going to wear. Yeah. Come fall season or October, I'm looking for warm woods, um, mosses. I love my sheepras. I love my smoky, um, spicy accords. Uh, I've really been into incense, frankincense lately, smoke notes. I was going to bring out, you know, I was looking forward to wearing um, a couple of those uh, Louis Vuittons and those Gucci's that, uh, that I've been talking about a lot lately, but I, I didn't want to become repetitive, so I've left those out, but... Um, I've got other You'll things. You'll be wearing that, them anyway. I'll be wearing them anyway, so <laughs> yeah. maybe I can use those yeah. as an honorable mention, even though I don't usually do an honorable mention, but um, I definitely look forward to wearing those smoky, incense-y, um, balmy things. But uh, let's get started. I'll, sure. I'll let you go first. Sure. So I think some of these we may actually like spray and smell, but I think quite a few of them, we're familiar, we know them already, um, and we'll just sort of describe, I think, what, what they are, like when we wear them. Um, so where to start? Um... Okay, I'm going to start with, um, let's start with something kind of warm. Um, so I'm starting with um, Hermes. This is Hermes since uh, Ombre Narguil. Um, I believe it's sort of basically like a pipe tobacco. It's that sweet, sticky tobacco smell. However, when I smell it, I basically get a feeling of like honey water, sort of a light, um, light, sort of watery, open, um, honeyed smell. I get... Um, yeah, I get sort of that raisin pastry kind hookah. of idea. Yeah, the, the hookah, like both that sort of smoke, but I also get like a pastry kind of accord. Not necessarily buttery, but sort of um, sweet spices. Um, but what I like about this is that it's not 
heavy. It's not like particularly heavy or rich. It seems to be kind of light and airy. And it just, I also like the way it wears. It's sort of very light and ambient and it's sort of, it's present. I think it's actually one of the stronger ones from the Hermesens line, I mm. think. And to me anyway, I, I don't know if it's just my personal taste, which is I happen to like this fragrance, but I think when you smell that Hermesens line, I think there are two or three that really just stand out right away. And and I would suspect this is one of their better sellers, like amongst the line. I think it just stands out as you sniff them and you go, oh, oh that one, that's, that's the one right there. I, yeah, I agree. I think this is absolutely brilliant. And it is kind of on the sweeter side that Jean-Claude Alain is known for. Um, apple pie, cinnamon, smoke notes, ambery accord. Uh, even though I'm not a fan of overly sweet fragrances, I think this is a, like beautifully blended that the sweetness doesn't bother me or it never yeah, it's really stands sweet. up even though it is it can be sticky or cloying if you overspray yeah. or your body starts to heat up i can notice those sweet notes but still it's just so um, masterfully done that i accept this for what it is yeah and i know. think it wears really well and that's sort of something that um i think we often don't talk about we just talk about this the fragrance itself but I think this wears nicely. Like I remember a day that I was wearing it and I just remember sitting in it and just getting swirls and whirls and thinking, this mm. is just so good. I'm just enjoying, I'm just enjoying this smell around me so much right now. Yeah. So I just have a great memory of it. Um, and I don't, and you know, I don't care that it's Hermes. I don't care that it's Elena's work. Like, great. That's all good. I don't care what the price is. I mean, it all happens to be the right stuff and the bottles are beautiful and it, it totally is. But I wouldn't care if it was 50 or 500. It's just, I just enjoy it. I just love it. It's beautiful. I love it as well. Great, yeah. great choice. Yeah, I, I find it more fitting for colder weather. Yeah, I would not wear this in any sort of heat. I yeah. think it's a nice, cool, cold, right. so, cold, windy day. Yeah, maybe on the coldest day of October, yeah. maybe, or yeah. the fall, but excellent choice. My first choice is Monsieur, and when I first smelt this, I... Did not accept this. I I did not expect this from Frederick Mall. I thought it was overly synthetic. It was kind of bordering on trends at the moment. Very dry, dark, woody, synthetic ambers, and it kind of hit me like a two by four in the face. I was like, "What is this?" And I think it was like the first or second release after um, Frederick sold to Estee Lauder, and I thought, "Oh boy, here we go!" Like already. Um, the aesthetics of the brand is going to change. But, you know, once I, I worn it a few times and got to know it, I liked it a lot more. I don't think it is the greatest patchouli I've ever seen. It's great. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, synthetics in here that sometimes are overpowering. Yeah, this smells a little like, to me anyway, when I smell... Firstly, let me say one thing. I think what's unique or interesting is that he's done a patchouli fragrance. I think... In a way, we haven't seen, we've seen patchouli as a base, but there aren't many lines or many fragrances that are really patchouli fragrances. It's been a while since I've seen that kind of thing. You know, like this Coromandel, and there's like Tom Ford has his patchouli, and there are patchoulis as supporting notes often, but it's, I think it's not that common to find a patchouli scent. Personally, when I smell it, it smells a little all over the place. It's a bit chaotic to me. Mm. There's a bit of like this um, industrial, smoky, burnt you know electrical Leathery. thing yeah and so i just find it's a bit all over the place it's not my kind of thing um but but i think it's a little bit of a more um i think frederick mall's line often is challenging because the smells are like unfamiliar or they're a bit unusual this to me is kind of a weird smelling thing and he has a few like we were just talking about dante bra where they're just kind of weird smells so i think this is almost like it's i guess it's a realistic patchouli accord but it just seems like kind of a weird smell to me. I'm not sure yeah. I'd like to smell this on someone. I think it'd be a weird, I think it'd be a weird smell. You know, all the things that I've said sound negative, but I do enjoy this. Yeah. It is a butch, masculine, yeah. raw, energetic patchouli. You know, it's got smoke notes. It's got leather, vanilla, ambers, incenses. It's very dark. It's got girth. It's got texture. It's abrasive. It's spicy. It's woody. It is, it's got that that powerful aroma thing going on. Well, I think he's also captured this like masculine, you know, this strong masculine feeling without doing it in a traditional way. Meaning it's not specifically like a leather scent. It's not a like vetiver scent. It's not, I don't know, when you think of like masculine scents, I think he sort of captured that essence of, which not to right. say women can't wear it, but it feels like a strong man, but it's not oud. You know, like he's done it in a different way. Yeah. 
And I think if you spray too much of this, it will wear you. Yeah. And uh, this is heavy. It, it takes a little bit of. Uh, I, I guess just easy on the trigger and 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 it and it can then yeah. and it can you know get warm and envelop in something really nice than just being butch and harsh yeah yeah which it can be sometimes yeah but all right cool okay um so I'm sticking sort of with an amber theme I, I really like ambers this is kind of like my my home base um so I'm gonna jump to um, Amber Absolute. Uh, this is uh, Tom Ford's Amber Absolute. This is the older one. They, it was part of the original line. They discontinued it. I think they said it was because it was expensive to make or there was some kind of ingredient. Sometimes what happens too is the company was also bought out and then they switch manufacturers. And so if there are like integral components in the formula that come from one manufacturer, and like they may be captives, so they're, they're patented molecules. And then it's integral to the formula, which is why the labs do it. If they switch to a different manufacturer, they suddenly can't make the fragrance anymore, or they have to keep buying it from the other manufacturer. But basically, um, Lauder and Ford, uh, I think Ford used IFF, and then Lauder used uh, Givadin. So they switched, and sometimes they just ax it. Or it could have been that there was some essential ingredient that was, uh, that was for it. But anyway, so this is Amber Absolute. This is the original. They did a re-release. I think they're the same um, or slightly different. Um, but I got this a few years ago and I've sort of cherished it ever since. Um, it has a lot of hype around it um, and it is quite expensive now, secondary market. Um, I, I don't know, care about any of that. I just happen to really love the fragrance. And it was one that, you know, you hear about things being discontinued and people going, oh no, I love that. And then you go, eh, who cares? It was crappy. But when it happens to you, like it happened to me where I'm like, oh no, I did love that fragrance. And it's, you know, um, and to me, there's nothing quite like this. Um, there's a certain richness and thickness that I just don't get anywhere else. And I have a bunch of ambers and nothing quite does it like this one. Ombre Fetiche from Anika Tell is kind of there, but it's a little more leathery. This just really is rich and smoldering and heavy and dense. And I just remember spraying it on myself years and years ago before I really knew the line, before I could afford the line, anything like that. And just really being amazed by just the richness and the depth of the fragrance. And I've just loved it ever since. So it's something I look forward to, you know, every fall to wear. I've never become really close with this. I don't know why. I've never worn Amber Absolute. I've never owned a bottle. But I can appreciate this for what it is. And to me, right off the bat, it's very sticky, incense -y almost like dried fruits yeah there's a lot of i think like frankincense it's quite yeah. a, it's quite a spicy um rich smoldering it's burning very amber. rich it's got golden hues of amber uh dry woods maybe but it yeah. smells uh you know like a serge Luton's or yeah yeah and again also keep in mind like when this was made and produced maybe there weren't that many like it out there no um although i, still I think really... we've seen this in the market since yeah yeah i, I like i don't yeah I haven't seen that many like great ambers, but um, yeah, to me, as the as the note as the accord goes, nothing's really quite done it like this. So to me, it still stands out as being a, a just a great. It does stand out, it, amber, it, it but it smells it's honeyed. It's sweet. It's it's powerful. Like this yeah. is uber potent, and this is the original Tom Ford line. Like the original line was good. Like they were good, strong fragrances. Like there was Tuscan leather. You know, um, Italian Cypress, uh, Amber Absolute, Noir de Noir, like Japon Noir. Like these were all heavy yeah. hitter, great fragrances, you know? So it smells like, you know, you got your woods, your your frankincense, your ambers, and then some some furry musks underneath, under all that. Yeah, it's heavy and it's rich. There, there's a sense of, say, like tobacco oud-ish in here. Yeah. There's a little bit of, say, um, uh, Sahara Noir, but that's much more like kind of hollow, but you get the same frankincense mm. accord. Um, there's a little bit, like I said, of ombre fetiche from a Goutel, but I've just never really found anything that quite Excellent. this. This yeah. is great. Yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a big fragrance. All right. So I've got Chanel Sycamore from the Les Exclusives, and this is the EDP. And I like this because I find vetiver can be challenging and uh, I like it for its dry woody qualities opposed to, and we were just talking about this before the video, you seem to find some wet lushness to it, which I don't particularly find. To me it's a very nutty, dry, rooty vetiver, um, some incense, and I've always got this uh, very slight sweet caramel to sycamore. Okay. Be it either EDT or EDP, it's just something that I've always associated with. But 
I've never really been a huge fan of wet, lush vetivers, mm-hmm. but I've always loved Sycamore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it, I, it's one of my favorites as well. It's definitely something I, I love. I have, I have the EDT just because it's an older bottle when I got it. Um, yeah, to me, I've always thought of it as like, it does have that kind of smoky vetiverness, but I was saying how like in contrast to say a vetiver extraordinaire, which feels to me like a dry, um, like dry roots and a sort of dried out vetiver, um, this to me always smelled kind of, I thought of as lush and like wet and green mm, um, with some smoke in there. So to me, this was like more mulchy um, and green. That was that was always my impression, which is why when you said, oh, you're picking this for fall winter, I was like, oh, this is a spring fragrance for me. Like this, really? is, a, this is a cold, dewy wow. spring, maybe like a warming up kind of day getting into summer. Um, this, is, this is something I, I would never wear in fall winter. Um, I think it's that so, tobacco you know, in the background, that dry, hay-like tobacco that makes me think of fall. But I, I, it's I never associated sycamore with the spring. Yeah. If we said if we were talking about Guerlain vetiver, I can see mm. it with you know the clean citruses yeah. and the crisp vetiver. But this to me is more earth tone, fall season. But either way, like I, I, I mean, I've smelled a lot and I own quite a few. This is amongst my favorite. I think it's just a very, very good fragrance. I think it's just excellent work. I, I, I just love it and I look forward to wearing it. Okay, in the excellent. summer and you wear it in the winter, but someone yeah. someone's always wearing it. <laughs> right, right, right. Perfect. Okay. So, um, okay. Uh, let's see what else. Um, let's see. So um, I was looking. So you know, along. I actually put this in my amber pile. It's sort of along the same lines, but it's not technically an amber, I think. But basically, um, so this is a fragrance. Um, we talked a bit about Lardisan uh, perfumer and um, and and their line. This is um, tea for two. Um, it's been mentioned before. People have been talking about it for a while. Um, I remember when I just started getting into fragrance, this was one that really just sort of um, captivated me. And I think it was somewhere between the brand, somewhere between the story behind it, but really just the fragrance itself. And again, I really haven't found anything that's quite like it. I don't wear it that often, but I really, um, it's something I just so enjoy whenever I do. Um, there, there've been a few different versions of these packages over the years that there was, um, there was sort of like the curved round um, knob bottle. This was the second one, which was the um, Hex. And then I think there's actually two versions of the top, uh, one which had this sort of etching, and then there's one that I think is indented that's actually um, that's carved into it versus like an etching. Mm. And then there's a newer version. Uh, which that looks like bottles. a much older bottle. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, I don't remember if this th- is the second or the third. The, bo- the boxes were slightly different. They had like a stripe. The first version had a stripe down the box, and the second one I think had the stripe with like a picture or a motif in the background of the stripe. So there have been at least two kind of versions of these and then the older version. And then, by the way, there's the original, original Lardisan bottles, which were in the um, red MPG bottles. Mm. Because Jean Laporte uh, was the same guy behind Lardisan and uh, Maitre Parfumé Gantier. So the early, early Lardisan bottles are in those red um, sort of cut glass um, uh, uh, right. MPG bottles. But anyway, I love this fragrance. It's basically a, um, I think it's a Lap Song Souchong, like a smoky black tea. But I actually put it basically in my amber pile. I think of it as kind of a sort of a warm, spicy, um, yeah, it's not really incense as much as it is kind of a smoky tea, but it's warm and it's comforting, but it's also spicy. I think it smells like an aroma of a place or a moment in time. Mm. It's sort of like an ambient aroma. It almost smells like you're walking into an antique store or you've been or you you've opened a spice cabinet that's like an old vintage kind of thing, you know. And or like you you know as a kid you played in some cabinet and you hid in there and it sort of was an old spice cupboard. Something like that. But I just find it sort of it's warm and comforting, but it also has some spice and some smoke in there. Some, right. Some of this, um, but I find it easy and cozy, and so it's just challenging enough that it's sort of enjoyable to wear. Yeah. But it's not so challenging that I constantly have to think about it all the time, um, and it sticks around enough. And it sort of, again, you know, in the way that say Ombre Narguil is maybe quite sweet and quite present, I find this is a little more demure. It's a little more under the under the radar, but it sort of floats around me, and I'll kind of yeah. catch whiffs of it. But I enjoy that sort of in and out experience. That is sort of just. I just catch little bits of it. So, okay. And we both ended up picking this um, so, that we both owned. So I've chosen T for two as well, and we've kind of did a side by side, and I don't see much or any difference yeah, at all. Yeah, in terms of like reformulation, we didn't, we couldn't tell any right. difference between them. Um, I agree with everything you said. Dry, smoky. Uh, I find it more incensey. I think I get more of that amber incense. Uh, to me, it's more a chai 
chai tea than any other kind of yeah tea. although not like the milky side of chai tea no very spicy yeah i get a lot of spices from this so this to me is a dry spicy woody amber uh through and through yeah. it could be a little bit challenging in in terms of spice i think the spice uh it's got a lot of throw with, with a little bit of body heat the yeah. spices will really jump off of but skin I, I think this is a pretty good like approachable niche meaning like this doesn't veer into like unwearable territory it doesn't veer into weird territory i think it's approachable enough that it's an interesting unique smell that's still relatively easy to wear that's still relatively easy for other people to like i don't yeah. think it's that like challenging i think you could wear this every day for you know a week straight and, and you wouldn't get tired of it yeah i would call this a spicy oriental yeah, it's got totally. a, a you know a, a nice uh, woody oriental yeah. base to it, and yet I don't know that it's quite. I wouldn't call it gourmand per se because I, I don't think either. it's sweet enough, and I don't think it's really edible per se. But no. it is sort of it's more in the spices. is it classified as a gourmand? No, I'm saying I think it is okay. oriental but not gourmand. As no, in it's not no, really no, edible no. or foody, even though technically it is sort of chai tea. But but yeah, I think it's brilliant. I I love it. Like. Yeah. You know, on, on paper, on skin, I, you know, the spices is what stands out to me. And this to it's, me is as Lardazan and as a fragrance that was one of the early ones that I really smelled that changed my idea of what fragrance can be, what cologne is. You know, like as a guy who just wore some cologne to go to a party or whatever, this challenged my idea of that, of like you could smell like that as opposed to whatever it was, you know, brute or tobacco or something. Okay. So my next selection, and this is uh, new in my collection, this is from the City Exclusives, Vigny 44, which is uh, from Paris, so it's supposed to represent mm. Paris. I've never been to Paris. I don't know what Paris. You've been to Paris? No, I haven't. Can you imagine? You gotta go. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, it's there's on the bucket there. list. There's, it's yeah. on the bucket list. Also, I don't actually know why vanilla is necessarily Paris, but uh as a smell but i i've said before i think uh you know la labo does smoky frankincense as well as anybody and it's evident in these city exclusive lines you know i'm seeing it in poivre in vini even in vetiver in in, in the um signature line uh as well as a you know i think in Mustachen they use an excellent uh incense frankincense but uh, it's really standing out for me. So this to me is a very, you know, obviously it's got vanilla right through, very warm, sensual vanilla, but it's got a very peppery, dry frankincense. And as much as it is about vanilla, I don't find it overly sweet. I get a nice green, spicy, peppery frankincense, which really stands out. Resins. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's some complexity there. So I was going to say there's a um, – I know it's technically iris, but when I smell Bois d'Argent, I seem to also get a bit of that, like, smoky cleanness combo. And also um, Atelier um, Vanilla and Sensi, I think is where I – probably this is a better version of it, but that same kind of idea, which I like the idea of – it's not quite like, let's call it Shalimar, like a smoky vanilla. But where that is very thick, I think this is actually quite light and airy. But there's definitely that smoky undertone that yeah, I think it's... keeps it from being just a girly girl vanilla. I think this is like, do you know what I mean? You think of like, right. spirit, like spiritual double vanilla is amazing, but it's like, it's boozy and it's spicy, yeah. but it's, it's, it's a bit heavy to wear. Like you really have to be in the mood for that. Syrupy, this right. feels a little lighter and easier to sort of wear. And I could, I could see that. And, and also I'm, I'm finding even just as I'm sort of working through the stages of collecting i find i'm actually just i'm just trying to pick stuff that i enjoy wearing and is easy to wear and so i'm yep. not always in the mood for something that's you know that's that cerebral sometimes you just want to put something on and you, you don't have to worry about what it's going to smell like in an hour and there's some weird note that pops out this this feels yeah it's very com to wear. it's very comforting and it's got you know it's got that spicy um frankincense but it's not challenging it doesn't yeah you know it doesn't overbear it's not cloying at all it's you know, it's just a nice oriental, easy yeah, to wear. It feels like a nice, um, interesting vanilla. It is very interesting. It's got complexity. You know, it's it's it changes and it keeps you company and it keeps you entertained for the day. Very warm. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna jump to. Um, okay, I've got a couple of other um, sort of. I'm gonna go with an amber. But basically, it's um it's sort of an amber and an oud, which is gonna lead into my next one, which is an oud. Um, this is uh, Roja Dov's um, Amber Oud. Um, I think, oh, this is the Parfum. So I think he has, 
uh, a perfume. Although I feel like he has an extract. So there's an ombre, there's a there's a pressio version, which is like I think just the thirty mils, and I think that's different. I think this is maybe the odor perfume. Um, yes, it's Rojadov. Yes, it's quite expensive. <laughs> Um, but, but I want to make a couple of points. Firstly, I bought it. You can't. I bought a 10 mil, or you can get the, the travel ones that are 7.5. And for these kind of fragrances, that may be enough. Or it's a very good way to really test it out. I've sort of tried to develop a habit of just getting decants where possible, just to really test it and make sure I love it before committing to a bottle. Or it's something that I wouldn't necessarily wear that often, which is probably something like this. But this is a fragrance that whenever I smell it, I just go, wow, that is something. That is amazing. That is, and anytime I've shown it to someone, I just go, what do you think of this? Or smell this, see what you think. And they just go, whoa, what is that? And so he has his original oud, he has a musk oud, and he has this one, which is the amber oud. Uh, personally, I think this is the best. I think his oud is second, and I think the musk oud is third. I think, I think it's pretty good, but it doesn't quite work the way I like it to. I've chosen this because I just enjoy it, and I love it, and every time I wear it, it just is magical. Um, and I think it's amazing. It's it's sweet, but it's also dirty. There's the oud note buried mm -hmm. in there, but underneath, Roja has a certain kind of oud that he uses that's that's not the same as anyone else's. Um, if again, if you actually go on his YouTube channel, he's got a whole thing about Bahor and and um, and oud, and he basically says that you know when he speaks to the people from the Middle East, they also say they always say, oh, "How did you capture this?" And and he lived there for a while in the Gulf, and I think so. He knows the smell, mm. um, but. Oh, I, I mean, it's rich and it's opulent and it's full-bodied wow. and it's just, the. I mean, it just comes right through, to me anyway, the quality of just, and it's not quite the traditional amber or ambergris accord, it's not quite the oud always that you think of as oud, like I'm not sure what oud he's using. I get rose right off the top and almost the briny, salty deer musk. Is that, what is this? I don't know about the musk, but, um, but uh, yeah, I do get the rose. I get this kind of classic rose oud combo. So again, I don't know if I'd say it's that unique, but whenever I smell it, like I could blind smell this and I would know exactly what it was. There's no replacement for it. And part of it is just the Roja pedigree. But um, but yeah, it's just a very good oud. And yeah, and, yeah, and there's the Roja. Right off too. the top, I wouldn't say that I would classify this as an oriental or an amber or it doesn't have that... Um, golden hued texture to it that powderiness that i associate amber oud or ombre nargile or even um t for two or vini 44 yeah and i store this in my oud pile meaning to me it's really at its core an oud fragrance with a let's call it a floral amber direction built on top of it but at its core it, it dries down into much closer to his actual right. oud fragrance but i just thought it was a really good well-crafted take on yeah. the note and we know through experience it takes hours yeah, you know yeah. for for roja fragrance to develop and, and come into that dry down so i'm not surprised you know to me right off the top it's just florals and smoky woods uh, very soft sensual smoky woods it's not something that really hits me hard but yeah but this to me, when I wear it, it feels primal. It feels visceral. It feels very it's, sort of. Is um, it, does it get animalic on you? Um, I, I'm getting the feeling. There's this... always a. I think I feel like he always puts a bit of funk in there. There's always yeah, something kind of dirty. Something it's that, in like, here it's lurking. The old French thing it's of like, like, there's always some dirty funk underneath. Yeah, he always builds it in. Um, but for me, I just find it rich and warm and opulent. Okay. But but you know, um, commanding. It's sort of you know you got to yeah, be in the it mood makes to a wear presence. this thing. It's really a strong bold scent but i just think it's just beautiful and i just i just love it and i look forward to wearing it not that i do very often but i just enjoy the experience when i do nice okay excellent so this is uh for me anteus mm. which is a you know my perception of this has changed a lot since i first smelled it and I was repulsed, you know, 10 I years totally ago why. Yeah. when I first yeah. smelt this. I was so repulsed that every time I made a trip to the department store, I looked forward, you know, the, the whole drive there. I was like, I can't wait to get there to smell that nasty fragrance in Teus. And at that time, I think it was like Chanel Allure Homme Sport O Extreme had really... Um, it, it came out and people were just like that's all people were talking yeah. about from Chanel but all I wanted to smell was Anteus and the whole time was like I couldn't understand why anybody would want to wear this or smell this or it was just so raw 
and raunchy and dirty and animalic and, and challenging and complex and and strange and spicy and woody and weird and you know and then that same year for Christmas that's all I wanted for you know <laughs> that's what I wanted for I, Christmas I think it's interesting that like you're naturally drawn like you're drawn to try to challenge yourself in some way with something that you know you don't like and yet you keep going for it just to see what mm, happens right and I wear this now and I don't get that at all it's like my my memory has changed or the fragrance has changed or my my perception now it's just you know it's just really smooth refined well balanced perfume i still get that you know that that leathery castorium that animalic beeswax you know that that contrasting patchouli and oak moss that sizzle that fizzle you know the, the aromatic herbs but it's just it's more of a sensual thing than that that growling beast i took it for or or misinterpreted it for you know the first first several encounters i had with it but um i don't know what it is i just i love wearing this um it's again i would say this is the kind of thing that we we've we mentioned before but it's of an older generation it's just a different you know they just crafted them differently back then and it's still i mean i i think it I think it's a bit dated. I don't know if it holds up. Absolutely. I can see that. But again, you know, you need almost like, like we talk about, like how Roja will, you know, update these sort of things. But mm. it's it's a classic. But I almost wish Chanel would like re-updo these sort of things because when you smell like Ego East, you know. Or, I wouldn't change it for the know, world, actually. I love it. It's just a classic 80s masculine. It, it's it's funny how, you know, you take uh, 80s and Teus and then 2000 and Tal. Uh, Blue de Chanel and, and how Chanel uh, yeah. views masculinity, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like hairy balls and shaved chest. You know, yeah, guys are grooming and, and yeah. they're narrowing their body and, and this is just so... I think, like, I'll put it like this. This is what men want to smell like and women get used to it. Blue de Chanel is what women want men to smell like, so yeah. men wear it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, like, absolutely. as in, you may smell Blue de Chanel and go, I like that. But I feel like when you smell this, this is what, like, you think of, like, a man supposed to smell like, and, like, they'll get used to it. Where somehow Blue de Chanel feels like it was designed by women to make men smell that way, and men were like, fine, we'll wear that. Like, <laughs> you know? So somehow, like, this is, like, right, this is, like, in right, the right. 80s. Like, when you had the 80s, it was, like, uber-genderized. It was, like, men smelled like men. Women smelled like women. It was, like, heavy florientals. And it was, like, wood and patchouli and leather. And, like, everyone was that. And then the 90s were, like, you know, CK1. It was, like, you know. Very it, fresh it was, and clean. It was, and... Uh, it, was, it was clean stuff. It was ungenderized. It was androgyny. Everyone felt guilty about being whatever they were. And they sort of cross paths, and then sort of 2000s and 2010s were sort of moving into like maybe a bit more like niche, woody incense kind of stuff, interesting synthetics. But like this is really this is kuros. This is like 80s masculine. This is like the Greek gods, you know? Like absolutely, like, if you, yeah. like this is what Zeus smells like, you know? It's like the Greek gods. This is what like you know, like sweaty balls, right? Yeah, or, yeah. But like you say, um, w women want their men to smell like blue. It's almost like the mother or the wife shopping for for the yeah. man's underwear and socks and at the same time she'll pick up right yeah. she'll pick him up a bottle yeah. of blue right yeah because yeah that's what she wants yeah. him to smell like but yeah so to me yeah this is like i mean that's ma that's masculinity from the yeah. 80s and, and 2000s yeah and, and and the concept obviously has moved on since then what what is a man but but this smells like what yeah just what men felt like and looked like back then and you know we've made progress and we're we're domesticated now we're well this just okay, this but... to me smells intelligent where blue smells it's just so boring and, and well i think there's also like a certain craft there's a quality of the craft and there's a certain richness and to me this smells like something you couldn't just come up with in six months like this, this smells like something no, that someone worked on and developed yeah. and worked that formula and really made and crafted a thing that you know came out once every few years and this was the new chanel fragrance that you know you're going to wear for 20 years Right? Like, it's the kind of thing that guys have been wearing ever since. You know what I mean? And there's nothing that will replace it. So, you know, like, there are Kuros fans, you know. All right. Um, That's it for me. Yeah. Okay. So, I've got a couple more. They were just hard to choose. Um, maybe sort of, like, 
a couple of honorable mentions. Um, okay, so I, I alluded to with um, Amber Oud that we might be moving into the Oud world. Um, I've got a couple here. Um, this is uh, Oud Ispahan. Um, we, we both actually own it, although we both own a fair bit, so that doesn't mean much. There's a lot of overlap. Um, this is sort of an honorable mention slash I think I'd wear it. I wasn't quite sure. I like it. I don't know if I love it, but I really like it. I just think it's a good, solid fragrance. It's just really well done. And um, yeah, it's got that kind of smoky oud. It's got the wood chip kind of thing. It's got the, you know, the bright, fresh rose. Um, it's good and I like it, but it's sort of an honorable mention. I think I'm going to enjoy wearing it, but it's not always what I reach for. I agree. You know, it's good and I like it, but I don't think that I love this. Um, I get like everything that you get i get a little bit of civet and patchouli and funk in the dry down it smells a little bit pissy um again this is i think the first of this style rose oud and then we've seen it done you know yeah since yeah yeah. uh diptyque's done it with oud palau yep um i think even queer got a i'm not i think that came after this right yeah it this was one age. of the earlier ones yeah and also um uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's one that's compared to this all the time. Uh, it just slipped my mind. I think it's um, Oud Palau, which... Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The Diptyque one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. So, Although I find that much more like musty and um, like 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 brown bandage-ish. Yeah. Um, so that's not quite the same. This I find much more of a sparkling kind mm, of rose. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like this. I think it's pretty good. I just... I don't know if it's exactly the thing that I love. Um, but, right, but it's a, but it's an honorable mention. It's like one that I'll be reaching for. Yeah, and a good fall season yeah, fragrance. Totally, totally. Nice rose oud for yeah. fall. Yeah, the one that really sings to me. Um, so um, Killian's got an oud line. Um, his pure oud, I think, is actually excellent. I think it's that like it's the smell of bakor. It's the it's the burning wood chips. So it's a little bit of a different kind of an oud. Um, but it's a little heavy and it's not necessarily easy to wear, but I think it's very good and it's, it's worth sniffing if you like that kind of smoky wood. This, um, he did an amber oud, which is pretty good. He did a musk oud. He did a rose oud, which I didn't think was great. And he did incense oud, which I think is really nice. What I like about it is he's basically taken the oud. Yeah, I'll give it, I, I just think this, this opening is magical. Um, I just love it and I just really enjoy smelling it. Um, it's it does dry into that smoky woody oud, but there's this beautiful soft, um, not quite creamy, but but like a saffrony, um, warm sweetness that I just I just find very cozy and warm and comforting that I really I just I just love and and it's something that I just always enjoy smelling and I often show it to people of like oh smell this it's just like kind of one of those gems that I just love showing to people. Yeah, really nice uh, incense and woods, and I agree I. I own Rose Oud and I, I wore it once and got bored of it. And it's just like, mm, ho-hum kind yeah, of Yeah, amongst but Rose Ouds, I didn't think it really stood out. This does seem a little bit more familiar. I mean, um, interesting. And, and these are just my, I mean, I just happen to really like this one. And, I get and a green incense from this. Green incense? Oh. Slightly churchy, almost uh, pencil shaving-ish. Mm, like, yeah, maybe like a cedary. Salty, kind of briny, yeah peppery yeah. very peppery yeah like i don't get so much incense that it's quite avignon no you know it's not quite there um and then the oud itself isn't too much i just i liked it amongst the pile because it was sort of a good balance of all of them mm. where there's a bit of florals but not quite rose oud and there's a bit of the oud but it's not just pure oud and and so it's kind of got a balance and i don't find it overly smoky either like, yeah exactly that's why like so it's smoking you out like i have i have some really like beautiful but challenging ouds and i kind of looked at them and i was like you know what these aren't ones that i would regularly reach for i would regularly wear this and enjoy it mm. so i have stuff that's more interesting or whatever but they're not really easy to wear and you're like what are ones you're looking forward to really just wearing and enjoying and this is something i really would wear and enjoy yeah i get more green smoke than black smoke which is nice it's okay. a nice change okay well there you um, go are, are y'all yeah i've got one other just sort of honorable mention which is i wanted to pick something in the sort of at least for me i call it oriental or kind of category um it's uh, tom ford's uh, cafe rose this is just the last dregs of a, a decant but it's on my buy a bottle list um i like this um what i really like about it is it's basically rosy of which the rose i don't think is a very good rose to be honest um but it's this nice like coffee incense floral and again now there are coffee fragrances out there um there are better florals out there but i just like the idea of this kind of 
it's sort of to me. I prefer this than noir de noir. I find noir de noir a little too boozy, and it's a little too um, uh, night on the town flamboyant kind of thing. I find it a little too loud, feminine, and a bit too feminine. Okay, I just, I just find it a little too feminine, a little too boozy. Whereas this, I would wear in the daytime. I find noir de noir is like an evening, nighttime, going out of the town kind of thing. It's like a black orchid kind of vibe. This, I find, could be a daytime, and I just find this a little cozy and warm, and I like that kind of chocolate uh, sorry uh, coffee incense accord yeah so um, i've tried this many times and i've always like i wanted to fall in love with this it was tom ford it was coffee i love coffee i love rose and it's just never something that um has accepted me you know this has rejected me Yeah, yeah um and you know and i've tried but to me, it's a rose patch. I get a lot of the patchouli in the yeah, base. Yeah, I don't actually like the. I don't. I don't really love the rose specifically that they're using. I don't, I don't. It's not great. I think there's like three variants of rose in here. There's a, like there's abundance of rose and and the yeah. coffee is very light. It doesn't remind me really right. of a. coffee. So what I would love to or, do is recreate this, constructing yeah. it for other things with more coffee pumped up, more incense yeah. and less rose. I would like and so more depth. Yeah, I'd like so, to see more depth. Yeah, to this. I, I have an idea that I want to like basically play around with and try and spray like. Avignon, kerosene follow, yeah. and then some other like you cafe tuberosa, and then some dark rose, you know, dark rose kind mm. of thing, and see if I can kind of recreate that tri, you know, accord combo, yeah. just maybe in a better way. I mean, so look, and you know, in terms of what we've chosen, like, I think it's these just happen to be our personal tastes. It's a mix of different brands. Like two of mine ended up being Tom Ford. We both ended up picking Lardizan. It's just kind of whatever we reach for. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, that's just at least kind of my picks you know given the, the list of like what i'm looking forward to wearing the stuff that i enjoy yeah personally. great season one of my favorite seasons to wear perfume yeah, you know. um you will get to wear the the richer heavier darker scents and and cloy people yeah but look i mean with like covid right now I mean, who knows when you're watching this maybe covid's over and maybe or maybe everyone's dead who knows i mean the future will be exciting um interesting times but you know um i would just say like use this opportunity to wear your stuff like firstly just perfume is made to be worn wear it enjoy it use it It, and if you're wearing it for the day spray extra like if you're putting on three put on five like enjoy it wear your juice there's plenty of it more out there the stuff that was discontinued 20 years ago you can still buy it and it'll fine if in 20 years you finish your bottle and you still want some you'll pay an extra 50 bucks for it if the bottle's 500 dollars or 50 dollars yeah, don't don't wait for a special day today is good like just wear the juice enjoy it spray liberally wear the stuff and especially if you're at home and no one's around again wear it for yourself like you don't have to be you know wearing it for anyone else other than you just like i don't care who makes it or what it costs or <laughs> what it is like i'm using this opportunity to just work my collection and really wear this stuff and spray it heavy and just sit in a cloud of deliciousness and enjoy it absolutely yeah so there you go there's our 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 sections our selections for the season let us know what you guys are wearing always love hearing um what you guys will be wearing and uh love reading your comments uh say hello to daniel please be kind uh hopefully we'll have him back for some more videos and uh we'll see you again soon